I am now introducing Insane Ian. Achievement unlocked! Greetings, Internet, and welcome to another episode of A Comedy Musician Reacts. My name is Insaney, and I'm a comedy musician and comedy music fan, and on this show I react to comedy music from the perspective of a comedy musician. Because that's what I am, and that's what I do, and that's what this is, and that's why you're here, and that's why this week I am reacting to Captain Jack Sparrow vs. Star-Lord by Freshy Canal, featuring Mike Cho and Freest. If this is your first time joining us, yes, I am a comedy musician, which means I react exclusively to comedy music because that's where my field of expertise lies. What this means to you is that I'm gonna pause the video, kind of a lot, actually. This way I'm not laughing over or talking over the jokes and missing some of the jokes in the next lyrics, uh, seeing how the lyrics and the video work in tandem to help enhance the jokes, and sometimes, uh, you know, giving analysis on the lines in the, in the song or in the video itself, and sometimes just even explaining jokes, because that's always fun for people. Other times, I'm just sitting back and laughing my damn head off. It's a crapshoot whatever you're going to get, but I think it's a good time either way. If this is your uh, the kind of thing that you enjoy, please like, share, comment, subscribe. Do all the things to feed the algorithm to get more eyeballs onto these videos. And if you really want to help the channel out, consider supporting me on Patreon, where patrons get to see these videos early, get my music and comedy early, and all sorts of other cool things like that. Anyway, all of that out of the way. Let us dive into this. Star-Lord vs. Captain Jack Sparrow. I said it in reverse order when I did the intro, but that's fine. Um, excited to see this one. Like Freest a lot. Uh, they do a very good job uh, in many songs that I've seen them in. Uh, don't know who Mike Cho is, um, but uh, excited to see them play Star-Lord. I hear Freest's impression of Captain Jack is spot on, so looking forward to this. Let us dive in. Wrath Battle. Star Lord versus Captain Jack Sparrow. One, two, three, four. Did you try to the best of like a Bugatti in the galaxy? The mother and the Star Lord. I think pirates are ravaging the making look like an art form. How I'm setting the Star Lord. That means. Uh, I like this instrumental so far. I, I'll, I'll start off and say that. Uh, I don't know how much of an impression uh, Mike here is doing of Star-Lord, because Star-Lord's just kind of a dude. So it's, you know, unless you're doing, like, a specific Chris Pratt impression. And clearly, this is the movie version of Star-Lord, too, because he's wearing the Yeah Baby shirt that uh, Star-Lord wears in the second Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Um, and the red jacket. So it's, it's going off the movie version. Uh, the comic versions have sort of morphed into the movie versions, but initially Star-Lord, uh, the character in the comics, vastly different than how it's portrayed in the films. Um, also liked how it went Mother Effin instead of the full version of that word, because they're Disney movies. They don't swear. But again... You know, that's never stopped rap battles from doing that before. <laughs> Let's take it back and listen to that verse intro again. The best and the most likable, the mother effing Star Lord. Yeah. Take Pirates and Ravage them, because his group's called the Ravagers, before he joins the Guardians. Yes. Starboard and Star Lord. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Boats and also ships, spaceships. Space, that, uh, going back to what I just said, that measly craft can't even travel through space. Spaceships, boat ships, sea ships? Do they call them sea ships? They call them ships. But yeah, that's the point. Both are flying ships. One's flying and one's sailing. Ships. You get it. Like a Bugatti in the galaxy, the mother and the star board. I think pirates are ravaging the making look like an art form. How I'm sending the star board. That means the craft can even travel to space. The off and on again, Captain of Wooden Banks is a great. Come on, it's not even fun. I shoot a blast in the crates. Looking like something that who could ask on a date. <laughs> Yeah, of wooden planks and crates, many of the ships that J Captain Jack has been the captain of, other than the Black Pearl, have been, like, things that are falling apart. In the last Pirates of the Caribbean movie, 
uh, he was on a ship that was just like, it didn't even look like a ship until it finally hit the water. Uh, and yeah, you know, it, it's, they're all made of wood, so it's easy to blast apart, and also, Groot's made of wood, so Groot would ask the ship on a date? I don't, maybe, I don't know what Groot, Groot's preferences are. You don't care about the loot unless it's booze inside. Maybe if you hadn't got the moves like Jagger Stagger, then you wouldn't have been back to keep a room five times. <laughs> that is a great bar. That is a great bar on, on many levels. Uh, if you hadn't had those moves like Jagger, uh, because, uh, well, not Mick Jagger, but... Uh, uh, Captain Jack's moves are based more on Keith Richards, who is in a band with Mick Jagger called the Rolling Stones. In fact, Keith Richards eventually played Captain Jack's father in one of the later Pirates of the Caribbean movies. So the moves like Jagger line, you know, we know that Mick Jagger dances, but the character is based on Keith Richards. But moves like Jagger is also a song by Maroon 5, and Maroon 5 times comes up as one of the next lines. So that's that's a good... I like that line a lot. I dig that. And also, there's been five of Pirates of the Caribbean movies, so that works there. If he was mute, then he would have more gold, less mute, and he's a track. Two deaths between you and me, so back. All four, we can shoot for three. <laughs> so yeah, Jax died a couple times, and Star-Lord's technically died a couple times. So yeah, that makes sense. Mute, then he's, and mutinies. Great rhyme. <laughs> yeah, when you, when people who are wearing eyeliner cry, their the eyeliner tends to run. You get raccoon eyes and look like Rocket Raccoon. That's that's a good line. Let's take it back a little bit here. That's uh, I I, I'm digging this so far. This is really good. Less mutinies attract Two deaths between you and me So back All four we can shoot for three I hope that I line it Also shoot for three is a basketball thing Yeah No, no, don't know what that has to do with either character But it's Yeah, why not? You're rocking this waterproof And when I make you cry I bet you look like Rocky Raccoon And speaking of double bows I said unless he wants to hop home He should cover that leg <laughs> Okay, yeah, that's a great line, too, because Barbosa has a peg leg in the later Pirates of the Caribbean movies, and Rocket Raccoon is known for taking prosthetic limbs from people. Somebody's cybernetic eye or, you know, Bucky's cybernetic arm he wants or takes somebody else's cybernetic arm or leg in the first, Pirate, uh, first Guardians of the Galaxy movie. So, yeah, these are both ship captains of diff two different types of ships who are kind of piratey because the Ravagers and the, the Guardians are kind of piratey um, and of course the Pirates of the Caribbean. This is a good matchup and uh, there's a lot of really good barbs flying from Star-Lord to Captain Jack here. I'm excited to hear Captain Jack's verse um, but man uh, so far this is already blown the doors off uh, anything I could have even expected and I wasn't really expecting anything um, not to say that, you know, I, I just didn't have any expectations just because I know Freshie's work is usually very good and so I was just going in expecting fun and it's already more fun than even I could have expected. Do you get what I'm trying to say? I'm not... I'll move on. Giant purrs worth the jar of dirt All this water rain and still dying of thirst I'm not gonna be the first to give him a curse Yes, power overboard because I'm flipping a bird <laughs> Sparrow overboard because you flipped the bird. Yeah, is flipping the bird is mm, throwing the middle finger, but also flipping the bird overboard. Get it? Uh, it's a thing. I dig it. Uh, let's take it back a little bit. Uh, so many good lines here. And also, uh, Mike Cho killed it there. That was great. Oh, great. The thing stopped recording. <laughs> that was weird. It had a little glitch there, but... Uh, we're trying again. Here we go. Oh, we should cover the leg. The giant purrs worth the jar of dirt. All this water ran and still die of thirst. I'm not gonna be the first to give him a curse. Yes, power overboard because I'm flipping a bird. If you link my ship like the caliber to do damage, then you're a pin's wrong. You best start believing in tired old cannons, mate. Because you're in one. <laughs> uh, already the impression's incredible, but also tired old cannons, meaning not just 
cannons that fire, but the cannon of, you know, a a, a franchise's cannon, meaning like what is uh, continuity within that franchise. So what what is canon or not? Uh, that's spelled with one N rather than two. Uh, I mean, technically two ends instead of three, because a regular cannon has two ends next to each other, but also the end at the end, so that's three ends. Um, the cannons that fire is three ends, the cannon that is continuity is two ends. Um, so yeah, the cannon, you're in one. That's, I dig that a lot. Who's wrong? You best start believing in tired old cannons, Macy, because you're in one. Who are you, eh? Some fancy explorer? Some sewer who's stowed away in one of my barrels? I forgot who you were, but I'm not even good morning. But you always remember one Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> I forgot who you are and I'm not even Gamora. Ooh, kind of a burn. Uh, Gamora didn't forget who he was. Just the Gamora that's alive now in the continuity is from a timeline from before she met Star-Lord, so she didn't know him at all. So the romance that they build up didn't exist for her because she didn't experience it. It sucks and it's sad. And spoilers, obviously, for those films if you haven't seen them. But if you haven't, why are you watching this? And I'm sorry. My boats are frozen, I'm troubled. You got no ammo, you only blow bubbles. <laughs> that's a good that's a good bar too. Got no ammo, you only blow bubbles because in Endgame, uh no, in Infinity War. In Infinity War, uh when he's fighting Thanos the first time, uh and Thanos is using the reality gem, uh his blaster only shoots bubbles out at him. Which honestly is something that happened in the comic too, I think if I remember it correctly. So that was cool. <laughs> a lot of people blame what happened uh, Thanos getting through because uh, Star-Lord lost it because he, he heard that Thanos killed Gamora and that ruined the way that he was fighting and was fighting more on emotion than actually trying to stop him. And Some people blame Star-Lord for half of, the, half of the universe getting snapped. So... That's a thing. Uh, yeah, so, uh, Star-Lord's dad, in the movies, not in the comics, Star-Lord's dad is Ego the Living Planet, played by Kurt Russell, the amazing Kurt Russell. Um, in the movie, yes, Ego is a living planet who has manifested a human-looking form um, Ego the Living Planet in the comics is a celestial and actually not Star-Lord's dad at all. Um, but, uh, so, you know, saying that that's a bit weird, mate, obviously that is weird because whose dad would be a planet? A planet that turns into a human that impregnated his mom and many women across the galaxy in hopes of overtaking their planets with his mind and form, and that's... Movies are weird, man, especially ones based on comic books. It's a thing. I believe that he's lost it. Does ever have to try keeping you hostage? <laughs> yeah, so having the one be on the shoulder be the one that's talking to Jack, because Jack definitely did, uh, especially the in the movie where he's got the other eyes painted on his face, um... Jack was going through and seeing different versions of himself and almost like an angel devil on his shoulder, but not really, but just different versions of Jack telling him things because he was uh, involved with some tribe that f pictured him as a demigod, uh, only to later want to eat him and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, so it's... The Pirates movies are also weird. <laughs> and there's a lot of the, that weird symbology in them and everything. And just having that thrown into the verse, too, is great. Freeze's impression is killing it. They are doing a fantastic job. Uh, the physicality and the voice and everything is just absolutely selling it here. That is that is wonderful. You and your posse's ocean fire. I'll take a lot of them, stuff them, and David Jones as well. I'll be the place of dead departure from beyond the water. I'll snow seal the road and I'll say hi to for you. <laughs> oh man, that's rough. Uh, Yondu, of course, who passed away in the second Guardians movie. Uh, the rodent won't say hi to Yondu for you. I'm guessing thinking of killing uh, Rocket, who's not a rodent, but yeah, I mean, but also, you know, the rats always bail on a sinking ship. But uh, yeah, all of that, all of that was really, really good. And we've got more Guardians here. Uh, 
who are all, uh, we got a, a, a CG Rocket and Groot, got Nebula back there, and Drax, and then a couple people who I don't recognize, and then, of course, Mantis. Hey guys, step back. Yeah, people are caught with Branson. But you mentioned Gamora, so F that to me, you mean she drew his dog in practice. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say if there's ever a chance to or ever a way to piss off Star Lord, it would be saying, uh, you know, you mentioning Gamora in a negative light. Yes, people aren't cargo, and even Jack says that. That's the there's that whole theory of the reason uh you know, Jack's ship is betrayed and and, and Davy Jones is even cursed to begin with is like, you know, Jack was sent to like get fifty souls or a hundred souls, meaning people. And, you know, he has to repay that debt to, to Davy Jones. That's why he's like, I'm not, people aren't cargo. I'm not going to do that. There's a whole theory about that online. Check it out. It's really interesting. Sorry, I was feeling a bit parched. Uh, I'm, uh... With that libido, any woman who'd have to hoist your sails, innuendo, uh, meaning make your mast stand at attention, uh, would heave ho. Uh, the comma there, meaning heave ho, calling them a ho, and, uh, and heaving, throwing up, tossing your guts, throwing your cookies, whatever you want to call it. Some of those got combined and mixed up and whatever. Cap, Captain Crunch. Cap, shoot. Uh, yeah, that's... <laughs> Do you really think I couldn't crush an ego because Ego the Living Planet was his dad? That's great. That's a great line. <laughs> That's really good. That those are like so far Star Lord's killing it for me here as far as the barbs going back and forth. I really dig it. Um there was so much there to, to dissect. I I've, I've forgotten what they were. Uh so much stuff going back. Let's just listen to it again. Why not? It's my channel. I can do what I want. Writing, walk the plank, and jump the shark. That's the thing I wanted to talk about. Yeah, the writing after the initial trilogy kind of went down a little bit. I still enjoy the fourth and fifth entry, but it, it does kind of, like, go over the same kind of story beats that the previous movies did, uh, as especially the fifth one. The fifth one, it, it kind of became really rote and repetitive with the story beats from the previous ones, even going back to the story of uh, Elizabeth and um, Will Turner. Um, but I still enjoyed those movies, but uh, you kept getting diminishing returns with each successive sequel. Jumping the Shark uh, is a term from uh, television, uh, where, you know, once a show has jumped the shark, that means it has gone into uh, basically dumb territory. And uh, it comes from an episode of the Happy Days TV show, where Fonzie literally jumps over a shark while, while on... Uh, surfboard um uh, so the term you know in movies we call that uh nuking the fridge now ever since because of the fourth indiana jones movie where indiana jones gets into a lead-lined refrigerator during a nuke uh to live to survive that blast and a lot of people called that the most ridiculous element in uh, a movie and that's when the movie series nuked the fridge and it's not exactly true because Two movies prior, Indiana Jones uh, fell out of a plane in an inflatable raft and inflated it before it hit the ground so that he survived that way. He still would have been pudding by the time that thing hit the mountain. That's, no, it wouldn't have worked. So, you know, if you say that's the most, that's the least realistic element, but that's Indiana Jones and we're not discussing that here now. That's a different franchise and entirely. In movies we say nuke the fridge, TV is jump the shark, but honestly... One can mean one for the other. Yeah, if you if you uh, bought the movie, he's saying that uh, 
you know, if you bought that first movie, the fifth movie, which many people think the fifth movie is the worst of the bunch, you got swindled by the Pirates franchise. Um, but also, you know, if you pirate the movie, then you didn't get swindled because you didn't pay any money for it. So you benefited from the pirates. Different kind of pirates. Pirating films. That's not a thing I suggest or condone on this channel. Unless you don't get caught. Um, so it's the kind of thing that, you know, that's double meaning, but the second meaning wasn't implied here. Sure. Good, good shot of the ships. Uh, oh no! <laughs> the the flags have stupendium on them. Oh, what's that about to happen? <laughs> Gibbs, plan B. Plan B, Gibbs. There once was a kid with a lance of a clue, abducted and ripped from his house for the blue. Survived from a child and is now a baboon. Like his brain had been drained in the fountain of blue. That was a uh, that was a whole crew of stupendiums. Uh Neat. I didn't know this was going to happen here. This is, uh, <laughs> I gotta take that back for a minute here. That's, uh, I do like Gibbs as a character. Uh, paired with Jack is great. His, basically his first mate. It's great. Where's the mum gone? Because you, uh, that, I don't know what this is referencing. It's a good shanty type verse, piratey thing, but I, I'm not certain what this is referencing. So I'm sure people will tell me in the comments because it always happens. Key to your hearts, the heart in the chest. That's that has to do with Davy Jones, because he his heart was in the chest. The key to his heart, he kept in his tentacle things to unlock that. Uh, had to stab the heart in order to gain the power uh, to run the Flying Dutchman, which was Davy Jones' ship. Um, movie lore is all that takes up space in my brain, and you know, comedy music stuff too, but that's that's mostly, my head is full of useless knowledge like that. So I guess this is like summarizing the films, because uh, we know who uh, Will Turner's father is, it's Bootstrap Bill, but we don't know who, who his mom is. Where's the mom's gone? That could be for that line. You don't, you might not have to leave this comment, because I'm figuring it out. This is summarizing the pirates, the first couple pirates films anyway. X on the map, X marks the spot, but an X, E, X as an ex-girlfriend, or, yeah, you can't place on the map because you don't know where her, her father took her. Yeah, it's kind of summarizing the first couple movies. I get it. <laughs> Why? Yeah, wait a second. Why were the... Why was Jack's verse which I assume that that verse, that piratey, shanty verse, why was that recounting his own movies? Why wouldn't that be talking about Star-Lord's movies? Why wouldn't it be dissing Star-Lord in a rap battle? I'm going to have to take this back and take a look at it again. Because those lines could apply to Star-Lord, too, because he, his mom dies and he gets picked up by the Ravagers, the space pirates. So this could also work for that. Don't get so fast on the keyboard. I'm figuring it out. The words and figuring things. Abducted and ripped from his house for doubloons. Yeah, they paid the space pirates to kidnap uh, Star Lord. Why can't I think of what Star Lord's name is? It's gone. His brain has been drained in the fountain of youth. Yeah, even older, he still acts like a kid. 
Skim through your bloody films and thought, where's the mum gone? Because his mom died, beginning of the first movie. His dad is a planet. Yeah. I'll have a partner to dance with. Uh, he, that's how he, he wooed Gamora, was dancing with her. Your maiden gets taken away by her dad. Thanos took away Gamora. I thought the wrong thing the first time through. I'm dumb. It's fine. I got there eventually. We. Yeah, because uh, she's the ex-living. She Gamora's di different now. She's dead. Uh, except that the Gamora that's in there is from a different timeline. Time travel is weird. Okay, pirates. <laughs> like we're taking over a second Disney ride. Infamously, uh, the pirates, uh, no, the the Guardians of the Galaxy op mission breakout. Uh, is a ride at the Disney parks in America. I don't know if it's come over to the overseas ones, um, but it took over the uh, Disney Twilight Zone Tower of Terror ride. It is in the same building. It uses the same kind of mechanics, but its 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 visage, its visage has been uh, changed to be more Guardians of the Galaxy rather than the whole hotel Tower of Terror thing. Um, that's a ride I will never ride because I have acrophobia and when I rode the Tower of Terror ride, I cried. Um, so yeah, that's not a thing that's happening. So yeah, that's a great line. That's funny. Um, <laughs> there's so much, there's so much going on and shooting and pirates and yelling and yo-ho. Zargnuts is, I don't know, it's like an alien thing or something. But he's basically saying, since you're nuts, I'll explain. But since you're Zarg nuts, uh, yeah, sure. That's true. Can't stick to or pick a side. Jack is teaming up with the heroes and the villains constantly because Jack's only looking out for Jack. A second Disney ride because Pirates of the Caribbean is based on the Disney ride, the Pirates of the Caribbean. I missed the second Disney ride part of that line. See, that's the thing with these reactions, guys, sometimes. This is a first impression reaction, so I'm not gonna catch everything. I try to catch a lot, obviously, that's why I keep pausing and shit, but I'm not gonna get everything. So, you know, sometimes I get comments like, you missed such and such. Yeah, no, no doubt, probably did miss quite a bit. Uh, I'm not guaranteed to catch everything. I'm never even claiming to catch everything. But I'm going to try to catch as much as I can. Um, uh, and so, you see, I, it took me a minute to catch that he said second Disney ride, because the first one they took over was Tower of Terror. The second one they're taking over is the Pirates of the Caribbean ride, because the movies are based on a ride. They've done two Haunted Mansion movies, and neither of them have done well either. Uh, that, But the Pirates of the Caribbean, for whatever, based on a ride, doing well. Bleah. Movies are weird. Going back a little. That that Groot thing is great. <laughs> Saw that dude on Counter Earth when he was selling meth. Uh, was Bill Nye in the Marvel Universe as a character? Or was there a, a, an octopus character other than Doc Ock? Selling meth. I don't. I don't get that reference. That one. I. That one. I miss. Explain. Explain that one to me. Oh, he actually said the f word that time. Now, somebody. I admit this is not my own thought of this. I saw this in like a tweet or something. But uh, Star Lord censors mother effing in the first verse, 
Second verse is a little shorter, doesn't say F at all. This one says fucking. Because in the third Guardians of the Galaxy movie, we have the first F-bomb ever dropped in a Marvel movie, and it's by Star-Lord. So, for a second, third, versus third movie, yeah, that that's great. Uh, I don't remember where I saw that. I didn't read the comments in this, in this video, so I saw this as like a tweet or something like that, but I was kind of expecting that one. So that one's not an original thought from me, but I'm at least owning up to it. Okay, so Starler was talking about uh, the studio severing, severing ties with them to kind of end the franchise, uh, and that's because of the whole court case between Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. I'm not going to get into that, because that's a whole thing to get into. Uh, and uh, so Jack comes back with severed ties oh, like, they, like James Gunn did. Uh, Disney notoriously severed ties with James Gunn based on some old tweets of his uh, back when he worked with the Troma team and was more into the edgy humor and was making a joke about something. A bunch of right-wing nutjobs uh, caught wind of those tweets and used those to get James Gunn fired from Disney. Uh, even though, you know, they presented them as being serious and calling him a pedophile when it was he was making a joke about those things. Um, because they were at least 10, 15 years old at the time when they brought them up. So, you know, people can grow and mature and, you know, change about how jokes they make uh, when they, you know, see sometimes the damage that they've done. We've all done it. I've done terrible jokes in my past that I basically go, you know, I was a different person then. I'm much more well-rounded and smart about things and try not to punch down in my humor. Um, but, uh, you know, basically, uh, James Gunn, got fired from Disney, worked with DC after that, and people were like, no, get James Gunn back. We're not doing Guardians 3. A lot of the cast of the Guardians movies were like, we're not doing Guardians 3 without James Gunn. And, you know, so they brought him back and it mended ways with that. So the ties were severed, but they were mended. So I don't know if that's going to happen with Johnny Depp uh, with Disney. Uh, actually, I think today when I'm re reacting to this, they're announcing that they're they're doing another Pirates movie, but the new Pirates movie is going to reboot the franchise. So, it's not connected to Jack at all. So, we don't know. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, uh, his, his head blew up when Star-Lord went out in space. It almost froze, and he, see, he was all puffy, and... He didn't because he's part planet god thing. Whatever. A um, lot going on. I'm uh, rewinding here a little bit because. Never stop flowing like the water wheel I run in. That's an amazing set piece in one of the movies where they're all. There's three guys sword fighting in a water wheel that's rolling down. Like the well, it's it's rolling from the water wheel down to the beach, but they're all sword fighting in it, and Jack's running along the top of it, and it's an incredible fight sequence and set piece. It's it's just it just looks great. Um, but yeah, uh, keep flowing because it keeps happening. It doesn't stop, uh, and obviously this flow of rap is his his rap flows there being equated to that movement. Over explaining. The guy with the eyebrows nab his limp. I think they mean Adam Warlock. Because in the third movie, Adam Warlock shows up, and he's kind of a golden guy. He's based on that species that they meet in the second movie, that they're all kind of gold, too. Yeah. Talk about that. <laughs> Thor wasn't the captain. The Asgardians of the galaxy. He just kind of showed up, and they did away with that really quickly at the beginning of the fourth Thor, fourth Thor movie. Um, but yes, Star Lord being the distraction sometimes, while the team does the rest. That that can happen. His ship's gone down. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so take that back here to the credits. 
Okay, so Mike Cho only voiced Star Lord. The the physical body was Isaac Moore. Um, both of them did phenomenal. The rapping from Mike was great. The physicality for Star Lord from Isaac was was great. The lip sync on point. Uh, and Freeze played both the physical and voice for Captain Jack Sparrow. They did an amazing job there. That was incredible. Um, based Olaf was was uh, Jossamy Gibbs. Uh, Kasfia and Elizabeth Swan was both both Sw Elizabeth Swan and Nebula. Uh, Little Flex was Will Turner and Space Ravager One. Okay, so I thought I did see the like the Will Turner and Elizabeth Swan things in there, um, like the characters. I mean, not things, characters. Anyway, regardless, all of that was incredible. These are I'll just let the credits roll here. There's a a lot of people. Connor Quest was the Marines, uh, or no, no, uh, Stupendium was the Marines, Connor Quest was uh, Rigetti. Yeah, yeah, Connor Quest was Rigetti, which is the the pirate with the wooden eye from the films. Anyway, yeah, no, this was this was phenomenal. I really, really enjoyed this. I hope everybody else did, too. La, bravo to everybody playing all the different parts in this. Lots of green screen work done. Uh, this was uh, really, really cool. Everybody was on the, the sea shanty, and Freshie, of course, uh, directed this. This was great. There's so many videos from last year's season. That's great. Bravo to everybody involved on this. This was uh, this was phenomenal. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please like, share, comment, subscribe. Do all the things to feed the algorithm to get more eyeballs onto these videos. Of course, you can check out this original video without me yammering all over it and taking a five-minute video and turning it into a 30-minute reaction because I keep getting comments about that. Uh, if, of course, you know, that link is in the description box below. If you really want to help my channel out, consider supporting me on Patreon, where patrons get to see these videos early, get my music and comedy early, get your name in the credits over here, all sorts of cool stuff like that. Anyway, we'll see you all next time. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Hey there, Delta. Augustus Sinclair. Tenenbaum sent me to help you prepare to rescue poor Eleanor from her mother's care. You're her bona fide knight whenever she gets scared. Your resurrection comes at an opportune time Cause Johnny Topside's been a copper to mine